Hey guys, good evening. Uh, I'm waiting for the stream to start over on YouTube and uh, I'll get it muted so we don't have to hear the feedback and stuff. But uh, hey, Colin. There we go. All right, we got a feed going. And let me kill this commercial. And we can get started here. Let me skip this silly ad. There we go. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, what we're doing today is we're actually going to do some live uh, work. I've been on the lathe all day. It's been uh, uh, noisy all day in here. Uh, what I've got on here is I've taken off <clears throat> got a 32 transponding gear in the back. I switched it out to a 60. So basically, I'm spinning up the transponding cluster at double speed. And I didn't lube it this morning before I started. But you can hear the kind of, uh, we've got the gear case running now. And just for the heck of it, I got a decibel meter here on my phone. We're clocking 84 decibels. And we're going to, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take the gear case apart, take the back off the machine, take the side cover off, and we're going to lube all those straight cut gears and uh, see if we see anything in there that uh, needs adjusting. And then we're going to uh, uh, spray it with the open gear lube. This is a Molly Dendum open gear lube available at any Napa. And uh, we're going to see if we get any change. You know, we've got 84 decibels as a benchmark. So uh, I'm going to get gloved up and we're going to actually do some work here tonight live. I'm going to go over here and answer a few comments real quick before I put my gloves on. And then we're going to get to work. Okay, I'll go for We got sound. Paul Trello, happy Wednesday stand. Happy hump day, Nick Schneider. Good day, good day, good day, good day. How's everybody doing? Got Colin here. Okay, good deal. Um, let's get started on this. That's not going to do you any good to... Uh, to comment while I'm doing this, because I'm going to have my hands full of grease. And uh, I'm going to put some gloves on so I don't, uh, so I can handle the keyboard immediately afterwards. And I'm starting this project with, look, all 10. I got all 10 fingers. And I'm going to unplug it right here. So that when I'm done, I still have all 10 fingers. Uh, back case is just some neural nuts, pretty simple. And that's that. That takes care of the collet closer arm and the back cover. And I'll probably bring you guys over. I'm going to take the side cover off. And then uh, I'll probably bring you guys over to take a look at what's going on inside of there. Uh, that's not the right one. Does anyone ever get the right Allen wrench on the first try? There we go. There's a side case, and you can see why I'm wearing gloves. That's the that's that Molly lube that gets spun around everywhere. 
Now this this gear right here is the 60 tooth, and I went up from a 30 to a 60. I went up from this little fella right here up to the 60. I had to cut uh, four threads per inch, so I needed to move the scale over exactly half. And uh, taking a look in there, you know, I don't see any metal chips or anything in there that causing all that noise. I was thinking it was in the change gears somewhere. But I sure don't see any uh, any debris or anything in the in those two change gears. They look they look good. The gear backlash feels good. But I'm gonna go ahead and give them a a shot of the open gear lube and get everything uh, coated. And then we're going to put this back together and let this dry up a little bit. When it's still wet, it kind of slings everywhere. It'll kind of uh, thicken as it, as it kind of sits and air dries. So we've got a nice coat of molly on those, uh, on those gears now. And maybe I'll bring you guys in just a tad closer before I close everything up. Let you take a look inside of there. All right, so let me put that side cover back on. Uh, that video turned out bad. It was really dark, wasn't it? Okay, let's put the side case back on and we'll uh, talk for a little bit, answer some comments, and we'll fire it up and check the uh, check the volume level, see how we did. Put my Allen wrench. Yep. Okay. Well, that's pretty painless. It doesn't take that long to do your do your change gears. Uh, it's never been a big deal for me. It's just taking the five minutes to do it. It's not a big thing. But let's uh, let's go look at some comments, and then we'll come back and see how. Uh, how loud this thing is, see if we made any improvement. Oh. All right, let's kind of turn the camera over here. Come in for the night, make my salad with chicken, sit down, turn on YouTube, and what do you know? Stan is on live. How you doing, Adam? 
And if it's making a bad noise, turn the radio up. Swapping out a change gear. No, I'm not just swapping out a change gear. It's gear lube o'clock. Ooh, greasy. Yes, it was greasy. Um, about the lube, this Colin says, about the lube, I, I uh, was once out and tried some Maxima chain wax designed for motorcycles. I found it pretty good at keeping the gear train quiet. That's interesting. I've got chain lube for the quads. Okay, we got quite a few comments. And is the headstock of the Lo what is the headstock of the Logan for? It's for the rest of the lathe. Just periodic maintenance. Yeah, I ran this thing all day today and it was just noisy as heck. I'll uh, I will remind you that we did get uh, um, I used a decibel meter in my phone and we got a reading of 84 decibels. And we've lost some video, but hopefully not sound. Chuck from Knoll Top Farms uh, says that chain lube is the ticket. Haven't tried it. Yes, everyone's experiencing video drop. Oh, there we are. We're back now. No, yeah, we got sound. We just lost video. All right. Um, it really hasn't sat long enough to, uh, to really lube up that, or for that chain loop to, uh, or gear loop to dry up. I will plug in. I'm going to, uh, I, gotta, I have to engage the dog here in the back, so I need to apply the brake real quick. And get this dog in. And we're ready to fire. We're back on our same RPM we were before. And uh, let me get my little decibel meter out here. Turn you guys facing me again. All right, uh, I got the drive dog in, got the machine plug back in. I'm still on the same RPM that we tested at before. I'm going to fire my little decibel meter here and see if we get any good. Okay, so we're running at 78. Initial readings were 84, so yes, the lube works. And we can try it in the other direction. Same result, 77 decibels. Okay, so that was kind of interesting. I thought maybe you guys might enjoy seeing some actual work in the shop instead of me just sitting there talking to my computer. Uh, let's check some comments now. Half the noise? Well, I don't know about half. We got about a, what we, we went from 84 to 77. So what was that, a, uh, about a six or eight point reduction? That wasn't terrible. Uh, James Green says, when in doubt, lube it. Indeed. Sounds like a Prius. <laughs> okay. Well, see what it is, is after you lube it, it only lasts a couple of days. It starts making noise again. It starts getting noisy again after a couple of days. And it's just something you got to do when you're running the lathe. Uh, I ran it like six hours today, so it was pretty busy today. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, scan the picture on my iPhone 6. Looks pretty sweet. Well, thanks, Adam. I'm a pretty sweet guy. Uh, non, uh, Rob Sidney says, non-detergent, high paraffin, 50-weight oil, pins oil. Okay, half the noise. All right, I guess we did good. Uh, what were the numbers again? I started off at, Steve, I started off at 84 decibels, and we knocked it down to about 77 or 78 when we were finished. So there was a definite reduction in, uh, in noise level. Joe Falmo says, keep it lube. Good advice for everybody. You could fill the crankcase full of anchor lube. That's not going to happen. I'm, I, I think, I, you know, next time I do a full cleaning in there and solvent wash all the gears and get all the crud out of there, I think I might try that uh, chain lube you're talking about there, Colin. Uh, for sound, six decibels is double or half. Three decibels is for voltage, etc. cetera. Uh, Scan, I missed what you used to lube the gears. Um, I used this grease covered, hang on. Ugh. Open gear lube from Napa. And now my video has gone. But it's uh, open gear lube from Napa. It's made for open uh, gear boxes and things like that. It's a uh, high molly content and it clings and it uh, works really well. I get it at my local Napa auto parts store and our video still isn't back. But as soon as it comes back, I'll show you the can. There it is. That's what you want to get right there. Get it at a local Napa auto parts store. That's what I use on my open gearing. Straight cut gears, works really well. If you use this in a gear case to pre-assemble it will turn any gear oil you put in there black instantly. It comes out black and nasty. What about high pressure grease? Uh, as long as it clings, that's fine. We have a Napa right up the street. There you go. Go get that stuff. Um, I got a box from James Green the other day. I haven't opened it yet. I'm kind of scared to open it live. If people start sending me things that are going to embarrass me, I'm not going to open them live. Let's go open James's box. I need to find a knife and grab his box. Oh, I'm pretty sure I know what's in here, but let's uh, crack this bad boy open and see what Mr. Green sent me. I'm going to hide the addresses here to protect the innocent, even though there's nothing innocent about James. We lost video again, but not audio. But it'll be back in a second, and I'm going to be opening the box this whole time. And we're back. Now I got a box within a box. And what have I got here? Oh, look, I got a rag. Could have used that like 10 minutes ago on the uh, doing the greasy stuff. James, whoa, look at that. He, uh, he TIG welded. A uh, puke canister for my uh, Boyer Schultz. This is uh, it's an oil to waste system on the surface grinders. And there's a little puke can in the back, and this is this is the catch pan for that. So uh, he made an extra one for me. Thank you, James. Made it out of aluminum, TIG welded together. Very nice. And he sent me a bearing. I think this is the. Uh, oh, there you go. Well, those are tiny little things. Yep, just needle bearings, a pair of Timken needle bearings. And then I think there's going to be a gear and possibly a shaft in here. Okay. So there's the gear that James made right there and the shaft. And this is for the uh, 
x-axis on my 618 on my new uh surface grinder his his gear was uh screwed up so he made it's just it, sometimes it's just as easy to make two as it is one so he made a spare gear for me and i sure thank you for that james what is this oh just a box for fluff that's awesome and where do these needle bearings go do they go over this shaft no do they well i guess they do okay so those these are the bearings for the shaft so how awesome is that james i sure thank you for that so maybe on the next episode of live shop we'll work on the surface grinder and install this what do you think you guys like doing actual work i just picked a kind of a little easy project tonight something we could throw together real quick uh it was the end of my work day and i wanted to do something for you guys instead of just talk and answer comments and stuff oh let's read some comments speaking of which you guys are carrying on one hell of a conversation there oh good lord got one of tom's wooden boxes no All right, we have a Napa right at the street. That's where I left off. Every 10 decibels is a, is double the loudness. So, Stan, you cut the noise in half almost. So, yeah, it's much more bearable. I mean, uh, it was getting really unbearable there towards the end of the day. Uh, videos back. Live unboxing. So, Chuck, you shouldn't send me a bag of weed to open live. Uh, I don't know what I'd do with it. Hope he doesn't buy offs on eBay as John Mills using. Yeah, uh, hopefully those bearings aren't the same as John Mills got. Did you guys see those things? They were just, holy crap. How could they even call those bearings? That's, that was a, unbelievable. John Mills, AVEX 7, or a horrid joke, unhardened races. Yeah, that was that was bad. Yeah, they weren't even concentric or round or anything else. So that was just bad news all the way around. Uh, Stephen Cable says, hey, Stan, would Anchor Lube work with the mag drill using annular cutters? Absolutely. It's really nice around a job site because you don't have an oily mess when you're done. This is a drink of the night. I've been drinking water all day. So Coors Light is a natural progression from hydrating with water to a beer that is really watery. Uh, Rob says, my lathe is a 1945 Sheldon overhead shaft with a leather belt, plain bearings everywhere. I still need to make a bunch of oilers for it. Pat Wicker says, good to see you, Stan. I like these vids. Okay, I'm glad that some of you guys like them. Uh, you know, I've got a few people that said they didn't like it, when you know they tune in and say oh big deal it's a guy talking to his computer that's why i kind of thought uh maybe working on something a little bit and then carrying on a little bit of a conversation would be kind of fun um it does work very well on titanium uh, i've done uh, a little bit of uh grade five titanium work with anchor lube and it works very well. Um, I actually had, uh, I used it with my shaping head. They call it a, a slotting head on the mill. You spin the turret around and it's got that shaper. And I had to cut titanium with high speed steel and I used anchor lube. It was just a quarter inch depth of cut. It wasn't a lot, but I made it through that uh, cut with the anchor lube and uh, high speed steel. Uh, 
Uh, we lost video again. I.L. Gopher says a shot or two of Sailor Jerry in honor of Adam showing up. I'm not even anywhere near my bar right now. We have lost video. I don't know when it's coming back. Uh, law, let's see. Grade 23 and grade 1. Medicinal usage. Yes. Blind shaft shops are fun, but mind the belts. Indeed, Blue. How are you doing tonight? Um, they're wonderful to look at. Those old shops with all the flat belts running around and all the counter balances and counter shafts and everything. Those places are just awesome. Yep. How about the Teos Lightning? I do have the Teos Lightning out here. James Green sent me a bottle of this about a week ago. There's Teos Lightning right there. This is a rye whiskey. And actually, I, I killed the last two bottles. Uh, this is really good, and we saved it for special occasions. Um, I think I had a little bit of it left at, from the, at the bash, um, but it, we drank a lot of it during, over the holidays, over uh, Christmas and New Year, and I really enjoyed that. And thank you, James. Uh, Comp Edge says, seems to be less delay from a comment appearing to when you respond. Uh, is that the delay you set? It was 60 second in earlier lives. Yeah, we're set for 30 seconds tonight, Colin. Uh, Stan, or uh, Nick wants to know, Stan, are you guys in Ontario affected by the fires east of you? Uh, they're very close. They are east of me. Dave's shop is cool, but I've, I've got an older lathe. It's cool as one motor runs the whole shop. Yeah, those counter shaft uh, uh, shops are pretty neat. I mean, they can run the whole thing off of John Deere outside off the uh, PTO. Um, a little more interactive, but we risk losing video like we have a couple of times. We've dropped video once or twice. So uh, that's the give and take. You know, if I, if I do a 60 second, then we get less video dropout. If I do 30 seconds, then we lose video every once in a while. But it seems like the audio remains a constant. Try that Teos pronunciation again. It's pronounced Teos Lightning, rye whiskey. T-A-O-S. Teos? No? R.C. Miller, howdy, y'all. How you doing, R.C.? Dave's shop is a steam-powered line shaft. That's pretty awesome. Um, are you guys alerted to possible evac? No, we are not alerted to possible evac. Not yet. I can be ready to go to the moon in 20 minutes, so we'll be good. Uh, A-bomb says, Stan, I still have the wine and liquor I brought back from the bash. You still got, did you get a bottle of the Bar Z private label? Oh, blue. Uh, it's hard to get good flat belting. Uh, look up Al Bino. His first name is Al. His last name is Bino. Look up Albino Flat Belts. Uh, they are one of the sponsors for the Bash, and he specializes in flat belts. Uh, Rob says, I just put on a kettle for the cup of char. Tea for you Yanks. Okay. Oh, the cordial. Have you tried that with ice cream? That was a... That was a it was a raspberry or blackberry cordial from uh, Portland, Oregon. And you dump that o over a little bit of uh, like French vanilla ice cream. Dude, you're going to love it. That stuff is the bomb. Uh, they will send to Europe. I don't know. You'd have to call them. Uh, Adam, try that with your girlfriend. She'll love you forever. Just uh, use it for dessert. A couple scoops of vanilla ice cream. And about a tablespoon of that uh, liqueur over the 
over the ice cream. She'll love you forever. Yeah, that blackberry cordial. A, a gentleman brought it to me from the bash uh, from Portland, Oregon, I believe. Bill De La Vega, hello. You just missed uh, the work. We actually worked on the lathe tonight, Bill. Okay, guys. Well, I just thought I'd shoot a little bit, uh, uh, shoot a little bit of video tonight. You know, I, I finished working for the day. That noise was driving me crazy all day, but I didn't want to stop what I was doing. I wanted to finish my job. Now, all that plastic is out the door, gone delivered yeah it turns into a video later but it's more fun this way isn't it um i don't have the bottle here maybe i'll bring it up or uh, to the shop with me next time and show you the bottle it was uh it was a couple years old it, it, it won a bunch of awards that's all i know and it was called a blackberry cordial Congrats on the job completion. Yeah, I'm looking forward to cutting some steel. I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. I have five barrels full of plastic uh, shavings. All right, if you guys got any other questions for me or any other comments on the lube or on what we did tonight or whatever, or any comments on the live show, if you want to see something different, you know, uh, when we're doing it live, we really can't get too involved. There's cords draped everywhere. It's, it's you know, I got microphone, I got Cat Five, I got power, I got camera cord, I got I got all these cords running around everywhere. So working is is a little tough, and I I had to set up for even the little bit of work we did tonight. I had to make sure all the tools were there, and the lube and you know gloves and rags and everything. So I, I mean, it, it wasn't too bad as long as it's a small project. But if it gets into something where we got to move around the shop, uh, it's not going to work out too well. Let's do a live 6 to 18 tear down and repair. No thanks. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but thanks for the suggestion, James. Does welding after using anchor lube cause porosity no i did a i actually did a flame test uh i put cutting oil and anchor lube down right next to a weld and it was just mig weld i did some mig welding uh, the anchor lube burned away clean and the cutting lube actually burned away clean but it did burst into flames the oil did the anchor lube did but uh pretty even across the board with the anchor lube i haven't had any problems with anchor lube around the welding Uh, you're most welcome. I got a lot, I've had a lot of mixed feedback from these live feeds. A lot of people don't like them. Uh, a lot of people do like them. They're they're. I think they're fun. It's fun for me to interact with you guys. See what's going on. You guys can make live comments. I can answer in real time, or as you know, thirty seconds isn't bad. Okay, guys and gals, I think I'm going to close it up. I'm going to go inside and do, uh, it is social. <laughs> I think I'm going to close it up and go uh, go get some dinner, close up the shop, and uh, get ready for my day tomorrow. You know, what next up is uh, more of the same. I got to find my cursor. Where is my cursor? There it is. And over here. All right. And with that, I wish you all a good evening and a good day tomorrow.